Winter is officially here. Welcome back to the videos. We're in the Surrey Hills. It's a little bit nippy and uh, I forgot my gloves. I've got a good wheel to sit on. I'm with Daisy today. Got three or four hills to tackle and uh, yeah, good to be out. I was doing really well in lockdown and then after work I just can't be bothered to ride so I haven't ridden properly in over a month. But your work is on your feet all day and yeah I can't I be bothered. You. And you ride there and back. And now this is the first ride I've done since February without my e-bike so. So we've chosen like three steep hills. <laughs> yeah I think I'm doing okay like my average speed is still better than when I rode before my e-bike so I've obviously got some fitness but I've had too many nights out with like beers. Like last Friday what did I have? I had four bottles of wine. I think you're doing really well. Thank you. Yeah. You're a very good sire. I'm not lying. In today's video I'm going to be doing an extensive, comprehensive, not that comprehensive, review of the GoPro Hero 9 because um, they sent me one and I think it's going to revolutionise the way that I film these videos especially on rainy days. The main difference between a Hero 9 and a Hero 8 is that it's got a screen on the front which is a game changer. <laughs> if anyone knows me, they love that. They know that I love to stare out of windows or like into the sky. You do. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking about when you do it. I was thinking about how many times you repeat yourself when you're filming to get a good clip. <laughs> Now I get a lot of questions asking what camera do I use on the bike and this is a Canon EOS R like it's a big mirrorless camera with a detachable lens worth a couple of thousand pounds depending on which lenses you use and this is what the GoPro looks and sounds like you'll probably notice the biggest difference in the audio because there isn't a microphone attached to this because putting one on would kind of defeat the point now you're never going to get the same image quality out of this tiny camera than you will a mirrorless one but it's definitely diminishing returns once you get over a certain price point and this thing is absolutely fantastic when you don't want to take a bigger camera with you it's also waterproof and super stable but i'm shaking it around but i think it uses some kind of magic to stay stable this is a very quick intermission to say big thank you to pedalshaw for sponsoring this video regular viewers might know that pedalshaw have been sponsoring the channel for the last six months they've just extended it to another six months and it's absolutely awesome that companies like that sponsor channels like mine so i can carry on doing what i'm doing so if you're in the market for bike insurance please consider them i'll put a link down below to their website they covered me when i was doing the strada bianca recce with daniela bonati and i smashed my carbon wheel straight away and they even covered my smashed action camera in the process link down below back to the video now having a front facing screen is everything when you're making a vlog you need it to be able to frame your shot you need it to make sure you haven't got stuff on your face without one of those making videos in a run and gun style is really hard ignorance is bliss i did it for a long time with my sony uh, but then since switching to the canon i basically can't film without it so having it on the gopro so good now as you can probably tell the audio from the gopro isn't quite as good as on the big camera especially when it's windy like this so it's certainly not a replacement for the mirrorless camera but there are certain situations where it's definitely a better choice boy how's this for a scientific test look at that gopro big camera gopro big camera this is probably the most scientific thing i've ever done on this channel which one do you think looks better well the gopro is wider I'll move it closer then. For the camera guys out there, this is a 15 to 35 lens and I've got it set to 15 millimeters. GoPro is set on super view. That is the difference. Is it 2000 pounds worth of difference though? Coming up, we've got a really, really steep uphill, really, really steep downhill, really, really steep uphill again. Now I've used quite a few action cameras over the course of my YouTube career of three years. One of them isn't here because as I said earlier, uh, it was covered by insurance, so I had to send it off. That was a DJI Osmo, and it was really good, um, but I did drop it on the floor and it smashed into pieces. This was my first GoPro, the Hero 7. It was a good bit of kit, but the battery stopped working properly after a few months. It just seemed to lose charge really quickly and I need to do some troubleshooting on it to work out if it's the device or the battery. This was the first GoPro to have that inbuilt super stabilization that everybody loves. But when it started going wrong, I replaced it with the Hero 8. I'm getting confused which one's which now, they all look the same. The thing sticking out the top is the uh, grill mount. So I can ride it on like that. Looks ridiculous, but it's, it's the best way to carry a GoPro. Size difference between the 7 and the 8. The 8 is slightly bigger. This one I've been using successfully, hasn't had any issues at all. The battery life seems better than the 7. Really, really happy with this one. Insta360, 
uh, just for a bit of size comparison. It's about the same size as the 8. And that brings us on to the new main guy, the Hero 9. Today was the first ride with it, so reliability I can't comment on. I will keep using this and do a bit of a longer term review, but so far I have three reasons why I prefer it over the 8. This is the battery from the Hero 9. This is the battery from the Hero 8. I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but uh, the new battery is significantly bigger. I'm sure some of that's down to it having a front-facing screen, so it needs a bit more power. The whole ride today, I was I was using it for uh, a lot of footage and a lot of me talking to the camera and messing it up, and it only used 30% of its charge. That is significantly better than the Hero 8 and leagues better than the Hero 7. Obviously, there's the front-facing screen. That's the second thing I really like about it, but we've already spoken about it. Number three, is that it shoots in 5K. Why on earth do you need to shoot in 5K, I hear you ask? Well, you don't need to. I don't think anyone has the processing power in their computers, unless you're a professional, uh, to deal with 5K footage, let alone 4K. I shoot all my vlogs in 1080p. I shoot my GoPro in 1080p. But if there was a situation where I wanted to capture more detail in the image, if I was cycling through the Alps and there was an amazing sunset and I wanted every bit of detail there was, I would switch this to 5K, shoot in 5K, and then afterwards in post-production, I'll be able to crop the image, cut down certain bits, stabilize them. If it's a bike ride we're talking about and there's some shaky stuff going on, you'll be able to crop in and then stabilize that footage much more easily if it's shot in 5K. So despite advertising and marketing pushing the 5K capabilities, it's more a thing for post-production than it is actually just shooting in 5K all the time. So it's more just what you can do with it after and how versatile that raw bit of footage will be. It's a nice bonus feature to have, but for me, the main draws are the battery and the front screen. Now going back to the topic of big cameras, a lot of people ask me, why do I use such a big camera? Isn't it really heavy and cumbersome on a ride? My priority when choosing equipment now is convenience. And having ridden my bike around with a variety of cameras for the last few years, I have actually found a bigger camera. This is my old Sony that I uh, destroyed. A camera like this is actually more convenient than a camera like this. I have to caveat this by saying, when you're riding a bike. The thing is with a camera this size, the buttons are bigger, they're easier to access. It's easier and more secure to grip and hold on to. You have better image quality. You can shoot in flatter profiles, so low contrast. So if you mess up how you expose the image or how bright or dark it is, you can then fix it later in post-production. I recently bought this little point and shoot and uh, I thought it would be the most convenient thing ever. I can fit it in a jersey pocket, ride around, get the shots. But because it's so small and fiddly and I don't have it on a strap around my body, I really struggle using it while riding. It's fantastic when you stop, you can flip out the screen, talk to it, do whatever. Um, but when you're riding along, you feel like you're gonna drop it all the time. Uh, the buttons are just too small and you're not really quite sure where you're holding it. With a camera like this, there's a reason professionals use them and it's because everything is convenient, in the right place. You can adjust pretty much everything with one hand. It is 100% the way to go if you're serious about making videos and riding at the same time, which is probably quite a small proportion of people. I'm gonna sign today's video off here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed a little insight into what goes on behind the scenes of these videos. Please like and subscribe, and if you've got any questions for me about cameras in the comments, I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. <laughs>